Welcome to Should I Buy Games, my name is Connor Evans, and today I'll be talking about Life is Strange. Life is Strange is a time-bending episodic game that started in January of 2015, slowly coming out in a five-part series throughout the year. Published by Square Enix and developed by Don't Nod Studios, Life is Strange seemed to just never go away. With the release of every episode, the talk around the game would swell and have me interested in finally jumping in and joining in the discussion. I never got around to it, there was just too much to play in 2015 and you can't play them all. Now we've hit the January drought that inevitably kicks off every year, and with a full physical release, it was finally my chance to try it out. The question remains, should I buy Life is Strange? Life is Strange plays like a Telltale Adventure game, but in this universe, you play as Max Caulfield, a student who has the unique ability to bend time. This is discovered when you save your long-lost childhood friend, Chloe, which sparks the main plot of the game, finding her missing friend, Rachel. The relationship between the two is the star of the game, and is really the only redeeming factor. Life is Strange consistently introduced new characters, but never gave them enough time for me to really give a damn about any of them. The relationship between Chloe and Max and the trials and tribulations to go through are the only thing that kept me pushing forward to see what happened next. I undeniably cared about these two, which perhaps is the best thing I can say about the game. Most of the time while playing Life is Strange, one word stayed in the back of my head. Why? Why is this game trying so hard to make me hate it? Life is Strange has all the potential in the world to be a fantastic game the time travel dynamic allows for some amazing moments that are unlike anything in video games. The developers get overzealous with this mechanic, especially the ability to go back to a certain moment using pictures, which was a nice surprise and allowed for one of the finest moments in the game, but by the fifth episode, use it five plus times in one episode. Too much of a good thing, you know? For every step forward Life is Strange takes, it took ten back. Introduce a new game mechanic? Let's run it into the ground. Get to an exciting part of the game? Let's make you do a pain in the ass puzzle that makes you want to pull your hair out. One big moment per episode is all the game allowed, and those are the times where I got my hopes up that I'd eventually like Life is Strange. Is this going to be the moment where the game finally takes off? It slowly became clear that that moment was never coming. Every twist and turn was bucketed by hours and hours of the most frustrating puzzles and fetch quests I've ever had the displeasure of playing. Whose idea was it to make me go find five bottles in a junkyard? Who in the world thinks that's fun? It seems like most of this was just added to fluff the overall playtime of the game but I would have much preferred a shorter, more concise game than the longer, aggravating bullshit we got instead. I've complained this far, and I haven't even mentioned the worst part of the game, the dialogue. It's as if the people that don't know are grandparents who heard the word hella for the first time, but don't exactly know what it means, so they try to pinhole it into every conversation so they seem to know. Two lines the main protagonist delivers are, are you cereal, and ready for the mosh pit shaka bra? I can't make this shit up. It's hot garbage, and the only thing that makes it bearable is that the voice actors do their darndest with what they have to work with. I audibly laughed at some of the more serious parts of the game, because I couldn't handle the lines the characters delivered. It pulls you out of an already damaged experience, and that's unforgivable. Life is Strange is a game with great ideas, but it's ultimately pulled down by just about everything else. By the fifth episode, all I wanted was to be put out of my misery but the likability of both Chloe and Max can be pushing onward. I sincerely cannot ponder why this game is so widely liked. Am I the wrong one? Am I missing something? It's just a shame that when I look back on Life is Strange, instead of thinking about Chloe and Max, I'll think about the awful script, the underdeveloped side characters, the pinhole game mechanics, the frustrating fetch quests, and finally, that none of your decisions matter. It's the final nail in the coffin. Even after all the decisions I made, all that I went through, I'm given the choice between two options, where one of them is obviously the right one. It would have been amazing to finish Life is Strange, and have all our decisions building to multiple outcomes, but that's not the case. Why? Why? It's finally time to answer the question you've all been waiting for. Should I buy Life is Strange? No. Do not buy this game. Life is Strange has its moments, but the problems are unexcusable. Many people really enjoy Life is Strange, it's a shame I'm not one of them. That's all for now. What do you think of Life is Strange? Do you agree? Disagree? Why? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you heard and want to hear more. And remember, let me waste money so you don't have to.